Hello and welcome to Inside Music, episode number 163. I'm your host, James Shotwell, and it's great to be with you again. If you made it through last week's episode where I was sharing my story with you, then you deserve a congratulations, a pat on your back. I very much appreciate you for sticking around, but have no fear, I have a guest with me this week, and it's a returning friend of the show, none other than Mr. Drew Holcomb. Yes, Drew Holcomb of Drew Holcomb and the Neighbors, Drew and Ellie Holcomb, or just Drew Holcomb. He's here on the show to discuss his upcoming album, Dragons, as long as as well as the title track single which is now available now on on streaming platforms and a little bit of everything in between drew has been on the show before if you go back about a year you can probably find us talking for over an hour i think about his career in music how he got started in nashville uh, met his wife in college fell in love and the story that happens from there and drew's one of those unique cases he is his fully authentic self in everything he does and because of that He's been able to build a reputation outside the traditional music system that has allowed him to release numerous albums, play sold out shows all over the country, and generally have a fully prosperous and realized career. Drew rarely, if ever, has to make exceptions to his vision in order to meet the demands of somebody else. And I think ultimately, that's what we all aspire to do in our artistic endeavors. We want to be our own person. We want to show people who we are fully, and that is what he's doing every day of his career. And on this show, we talk a little bit about how that happens, and I'll tell you why. This show was created in collaboration with our YouTube channel, Music Biz, which I know we promote a lot, but I want to tell you specifically about the episode involving Drew. If you go to Music Biz on YouTube right now, or you search Music Biz Drew Holcomb, you're going to find Drew and I discussing what it means to be authentic and why there is value in that in the music industry today. So please, Head over to YouTube, search Music Biz 101 or Music Biz Drew Holcomb, and check that video out. And while you're there, subscribe to our channel because that helps us make more video, that helps us make more content, and that helps us bring you more great stuff. Now, Drew does have a new album coming out. It's called Dragons. He also has a tour for the record, as well as his annual Moon River Music Festival. Now, Moon River's already sold out. You might be able to win tickets or get press access if you're one of the writers who listens to this show. But you should still check it out if you have a chance. And you definitely want to listen to Dragons, the title track off Drew's upcoming album, as well as the other singles that he's released. I've been following Drew for a long time now, and I think that this record is really something special. More than ever, he is being himself. He's letting all the sides of his personality show, and they find a way to all flow together seamlessly on this release. There's also a great appearance by Ellie Holcomb, as well as the Lone Bellow, who I hope to have on the show in the near future. But before we get to all that, let's go over the basics. This show, Inside Music, is brought to you by Holix, the music industry's leading digital promotional distribution company. And what that means is that Holix works with record labels, management, publicists, and independent artists from all over the world to share new and unreleased music without fear of piracy. To learn how they do that and gain access to a free 30-day trial, visit holix.com. That's H-A-U- lix.com. You should also be following the company on Twitter. That's where you can learn about this show. It's at Holix, H-A-U-L-I-X. And if you'd like to follow me, my handle is James D. Shotwell. That's James D as in dog, Shotwell, just like it sounds. Find me on there. Let's talk. Tell me what you love about the show. Tell me what you hate about the show. And above all else, please, please, please check out Drew Holcomb's new album, Dragons, when it arrives this August. And until then, stream the song, Dragons, as much as possible. It is one of my favorite songs of the year, and I really think it marks a career high for Drew, who already has a critically and audience-acclaimed catalog of songs that will just sync up with your life. So check all that out. But for right now, sit back, relax, and enjoy my conversation with the one and only Mr. Drew Holcomb. Taking a few minutes to chat with me. Yeah, no problem. I hear you're in uh, you're in interview mode today. I think you just got off one. Are you uh, are you doing a lot of interviews so far for the new record? I know we're still a few months out. Yeah, we're starting to do some. Yeah, not not a bunch, but uh, yeah, you know, a couple of weeks, four or five a week. 
Well, I'm excited to have the opportunity to chat with you a little bit about it. I had the chance to hear it already. And I got to tell you, I've been pretty excited because I saw you and Ellie in Grand Rapids back in February and you played a little bit of new material. And I was like, man, I bet that sounds great on the record. And it did. So it all worked out. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, we had, uh, we had just started. We had just recorded it uh, right before that tour. So uh, we were still, we weren't finished with it. We had started in January and um made some pretty good headway so well it's it turned out really great man and i think it's interesting how you continue to evolve i didn't i never know what to expect f from you between albums especially because you have you know a couple of different projects up in the air at all times but when i heard fam <laughs> to hear family and dragons in like a, in a acoustic setting like that i was like well this re this record could kind of go any direction and, and it does it finds a nice the, those two songs kind of are like anchors on the record in a way it feels like it balances out what you hear yeah, that's that's those are definitely key, you know, key tracks, I guess. Well, I want to know how how are you feeling heading into this album? I mean, I feel like you've reached this point in your career and it's kind of what I wanted to talk to you about in a, in a big way with everything that you guys do that's just I, I don't I always wonder like what you're looking towards like what what you have your eyes set on like what's the next thing is it all is it all about just continuing to do what we're doing or do, are you like this record will maybe take us here or maybe get us to this next plateau this next place in the industry oh I certainly um I'm always you know pretty uh ambitious for you know you know more you know for the next thing and so I think more than anything with this record, I wanted to do two things. I wanted to have songs on it that, that were sort of career, uh, defining, you know, I think we already had a couple of those perhaps, but maybe even hopefully more on this record than what we've had before. I think dragons is a song that, well, it's not obviously not going to be a big radio song. Uh, it, I think it's a very, you know, it's a very meaningful song. It's a very like, you know, I think it's a, from what we've gathered from the people that we've played before, they think it's a pretty powerful song and, so, yeah, looking for career songs and looking for, uh, you know, to grow what we've got on the like end of the world. I hope will be a, you know, we're going to, that song is going to be a radio single and, you know, hope to have a national story. That's, that's you know, I want to, we've done really well growing what we've done very organically over time. And but I'm still uh, hungry for um, more folks to hear our music and to grow what we've got and give ourselves opportunity to, tour in different places at a different level and but all that said i'm really grateful for what we've already built and uh if if all this record does is sort of maintain what we've already built then i would still consider it uh, a success you know um because you know we've been making making music making a living as a band and for 15 years and so that's something to be proud of and and um we make the music because we love making the music, but we, uh, and that in and of itself is enough, but we certainly hope that it grows, you know, from a sort of business point of view and, uh, from a fan point of view. I, I, when I first heard dragons, I referred to it to other people as what I like to call a tattoo song, where I feel like it's the kind of song that will inspire people to get tattoos based on the lyrics of the song. It has that kind of message where people are like, I'm going to carry this with me forever. I love that. That's awesome. Well, it's funny you mentioned that. We're actually, I'm actually thinking about doing that myself. So there you uh, go. So if people see you sporting a dragon tattoo, they'll know yeah, where it's from. I'm proving I'm proving your point. I mean, that really says something, though. I mean, you've written a lot of songs in your day, so if this one connects with you in that way, then I can only imagine the effect it'll have on other people. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah, it, it definitely does connect with me on a, on, a, on a very unique and special level. Is it? Is it true, I guess, the, the, the basis of the song? Because it is kind of the story that you've heard. Is that, is that all a true story? Uh, it, I mean, it's based on true stories. Yeah, certainly. Um, I have, I've had very vivid dreams of uh, both my grandfather and my brother, um, you know, over the years since their passing. And so um, there's a big part of that that is, is true. It's not an exact, it's not an exact true story. Um, but it's a true story. <laughs> That's good I mean? enough for me. Absolutely. It's, it's, yeah, if, if it were a movie, it would start with based on a true story. 
yeah, exactly. And that's enough. That's enough. Um, something I really wanted to talk to you about and why I uh, asked our mutual acquaintance, Lindsay, to set this up is because I do a lot of work with people on building a community and building an audience. And you and I have talked in the years past about this, but every time I see you, especially with this recent tour with you and Ellie, I'm always just, I'm fascinated by the people that come out to the shows and the people that love you and this community of people that kind of are around your music because you exist in this bubble that I feel is safe to say is outside maybe the quote unquote mainstream of music. But there are people that are into you are so devoted and dedicated to what you're doing and it's spawned you know the record club and it's spawned a music festival and I, i'm just curious in like the simplest terms like wh where does that come from do you think like what i mean obviously hard work and connecting with fans over the years but is there like a key element to developing the community that surrounds drew holcomb and drew holcomb and the neighbors and all the other projects that you do yeah i, I think if i had one sort of working um, uh, working sort of thesis on that because I don't, I don't really it, you can only it's at, at best a guess but I think that both Ellie and I have always sort of uh, on stage and off stage tried to be as, as authentic as human beings as possible and you know share our music and our, li and our, and our life through our music and not necessarily try to put on um, uh, a show or put on a face that's not really true to who you know we are off stage and on stage and so and we've always been attracted to people who are like that and, and works with people who are like that like Johnny Swim and, and Need to Breathe and Ben Rector for, you know all these friends of ours that we've made music with and um, I think that I think that people are people relate to that you know I think um, people always ask me you know would you rather be you know friends with Bruce Springsteen or Bob Dylan and even though I love Bob Dylan's music it's easy answer for me Springsteen because he's a relatable person you know and he on stage he has uh, you know gratitude for his fans and um, we've always tried to make our music and our show an invitation to participate in something not just watch us do something uh and i think there's a there's a there's a distinction in that and i think you know in, in, in culture there's not a ton of that i think a lot of people are you know finding their identity in being artists which we certainly have that too somewhat but we try not to you know we try to uh, let our music be an expression of, of who we are and, and, and an invitation for people to take that music and let it be a part of their own life. Do you think the, I guess, the acceptance of your authentic self to fans, has that given you confidence in kind of how you market yourself and how you share yourself? Because, I, like, for example, I love the video for Family, but I was like, I never thought I would get to see you dance. And then it was like, uh, <laughs> here he is, cut loose. And I was like, this seems like the kind of thing that only happens because you're comfortable, people are comfortable with who you are and that gives you like the confidence to do it. Oh yeah, for sure. And, I, and also, you know, thinking about how can I make sure there's something on the internet so when my daughter's 17, her, she, her friends can pull it up and make fun of her and, and say, your dad is such a goofball. Um, you know, so no, there's definitely like a, a piece of it that's, you know, I'm a pretty like stoic person, but I'm not a serious person. Uh, and on stage, I can kind of come out, come across that way a little bit sometimes. So it was it's definitely intentional for me to like let let it all loose, but also like keep the straight face like I do in the video because that's that's pretty true to true to to form. Uh, but we, you know, we've never hired like social media consultants or uh, you know, there's just a lot of like ways to try to do all those things nothing is wrong with those things and they may have even grown our our fan base faster if we had done those things but um it's just not really our style you know and and uh i, I like the the sort of folks that are attracted to our music tend to be people that um you know like people always ask you, you meet fans is it weird is it awkward i'm like no because our fans are pretty cool you know uh they usually just come up to you and say hey i love your music my daughter had this song as a graduation video or you know this song was at our wedding or you know they're just like normal folks who like music and are pretty easy to to say hello to and get along with and and i i like that you know i, I remember the first time i saw mumford and sons twice you know the period of two years the first time was at a really small venue before they blew up and it was awesome the crowd felt really intimate and and like like they 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 knew a secret you know and then they blew up and we saw them at a bigger venue and like everybody around us was talking the whole show except for during the three hits. And yes. it just sort of took the magic out of it. And I, and I think that we're obviously like perpetually on the, on the, in the first category 
and that's okay with me. It, it is kind of exciting, I guess, to be a fan in that way because you go out to a show, like when you, I knew you and Ellie were coming to Grand Rapids, you guys played this beautiful place called the Wealthy Theater, and I was like, oh, who's going to come out to the show? Because I live in a bubble in my own head where I'm like, I don't know who knows the, who knows of Drew Holcomb, and then I come out and it's a sold-out show, and you're just like, oh, I guess everyone does. Maybe I'm missing, maybe I need to be a part of more clubs. <laughs> Clearly there's something happening here. And it's kind of interesting to like in, walk into that bubble as a, as a member of the fan, because you're like, oh, there's a whole community of people I should be a part of. We're all in on this secret together, or this thing together. Right, right. We're not alone. <laughs> yes, I'm not crazy. This is really good. I'm not, I'm not insane. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Um, well, let's, I want to talk a little bit Real quick about um, Moon Moon River because I'm I'm making the journey out this September. It's going to be my first Moon River experience, my first time in Chattanooga, and this is another event that it, it's kind of a crazy how quickly it, it sells, how people how fast it sells, how quickly people get behind it. Are you impre- Are you kind of surprised by how popular it has become? Oh yeah, very very surprised. I mean, I never dreamed it would grow to be something where there are people who are like big fans of Moon River come to the festival that honestly don't have any idea who I am and that's totally fine with me you know it's uh it's fun to create something that can sort of launch and sail on its own you know uh so that's been really fun and and it's been neat to see uh how people have come repeatedly I mean we have I I don't know the exact numbers but the number of people that are returning in 2019 who were there in 2018 is I want to say it's like close to 50 percent Wow, and how it's really high for a music festival? Yeah, absolutely, especially one that isn't in like New York, Chicago, or some giant. Like I've never, like for example, I've never been to Chattanooga. I've been to Tennessee plenty of times, Memphis and Nashville, but Chattanooga. I was like, I don't even know how to get to Chattanooga. Um, just gonna, I'm, I'm making my way there, and it, but it seems like. Seems like a place that everyone wants to be. I know a ton of people that are making the journey this year that hadn't made it before, and it is it is crazy how it's become something bigger than yourself. Because even when I was pitching it to my partner, and I was like, we should go to this thing. And I was like, well, well, Drew Holcomb, and on and on. And then I got to, I showed her the actual ad mat, and she was like, holy shit, what is this? Like, she was just like blown away right. by the things that are there. Um, for people that are coming out to Chattanooga like myself, could you tell me, uh, what is what is the thing I need to do outside of the festival? Well, it's, a, it's, sort, of, it's a, sort of a like foothills of the mountains kind of town, and so there's lots of uh, river activities, you know, you paddleboard on the river right downtown. There's, uh, you know, everybody typically stays near Coolidge Park because it's right it's on the other side of downtown from the river. So, you know, staying staying there in town and enjoying kind of the restaurant scene. And, uh, you know, they've got some major tourist attractions like the Hunter Art Museum and uh, the Tennessee Aquarium and a variety of other things. But it's a great town to rent bikes and ride around. It's, it's a kind of town you want to get outside. That would be what I would sort of recommend. Uh, and and then and then obviously the festival itself will be will be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm actually we already booked our Airbnb. We're staying in a treehouse, something we've never done before. Oh, that's all. Awesome. Yeah, uh, we're getting like you said, we're getting outside. I don't even know if there's a kitchen, a proper kitchen. I think we have to grill every day. It's fine. We'll make it there work. There you go. That'll be perfect. <laughs> well, that sounds fantastic, man. What is the uh, what is the hardest part of doing something like Moon River? I don't ever understand how you and Ellie juggle all these balls and raise a family. It just seems like you're constantly giving yourself more and more to do. So with Moon River, well, what has gotta, been the biggest challenge? We've honestly got a great team. Uh, I have partners on the river that are promoters. Um, they run Bonnaroo and things like that. So all the like, you know, the details of porta potties and security and ticketing are are sort of way above my pay grade. And that's what I get good partners are for is to sort of take the things you don't know how to do off your plate and, and into their hands. So um, the hardest part, honestly, is, is looking at the, the lineup because. You know, you have these dreams of who you want to play, and then you've got to, you know, you have both personal relationships with between me and the artist, and then between the promoter who does the booking and the negotiating of price and all that kind of stuff. Um, but you know, we've been on this great track record with the last two years selling out quickly. So as soon as it's over, we start talking about who we want for next year and the pressure of, of that. It's good. It's fun. It's it's difficult, but it's good. Um, I'd say that's the toughest part. And then the, the, the hardest thing during the festival is just like not worrying about weather. Uh, Cause that's the thing that can really, you know, just derail uh, the whole thing is, you know, if you get thunderstorms and stuff. So that always makes you nervous. So you're just checking the radar, but trying not to check it too often all, all of the weeks leading up to it. 
Yeah, I've uh, as a traveling person to festivals, I definitely know. I've learned what websites have like the their sixty day forecast or something like that. And even though it's wildly right. inaccurate, you're like, I'll just check it. I'll just start looking at it now. It's fine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. You mentioned another single coming out that'll be a radio single. When are we going to hear the next track? I've been surprised that we've already gotten two. When's the next one coming? Yeah, it's coming soon. I think we're we're planning sort of one a month until release date. So I. I you know, I guess Dragons came out a little over a week ago. Uh, yeah, we're, we're close. I'd say another three or four weeks. I, I, I don't have my calendar right in front of me, but uh, definitely by the end of, before the end of June. Well, that's, that's wonderful, man. I thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. We've had a bunch of great conversations over the years, and this is one I've been looking forward to. And I will see you at Moon River in a few months. All right, man. Sounds good. Thanks a lot. Yep. Have a great day. You too. Take care.